Hey everybody, Icy Cat here. Today we're talking about shields, the best ways to use them and the best ways to beat them. We've got several unique shield operators in Siege, and the first one we're going to look at here is Blitz. He's got the flash system on the front of his shield. Now, you're going to be limited to a pistol with any of your shield operators, and I'm going to recommend putting the laser sight on the front of any of them, because hip fire is going to be a strong ally for you. It's going to give away your position. People are going to see the laser around corners, but it's really to your advantage to be able to maintain that accuracy under fire while you have the shield up. You can aim down the sights while you're doing that, and that puts your shield down and uh, allows you to be headshot if you're not careful. Careful. There is the ability to sort of quick scope with that. The developers may fix that so that you're not able to do that as quickly or easily. We're going to have to see if that stays in. Currently, though, you can do sort of a quick scoping effect with the aiming down the sights on the shield. Shields make good breachers as far as dropping down into trap doors or looking in holes in the floors because the shield will protect them from any shots that come up from below. And when they do that, they can really get that good cover going. However, it can be a little challenging to aim down between those little gaps that the rafters afford, especially if they're not lining up in the direction that you're trying to fire in. When you're using a shield operator, you're pretty slow, so you're going to want to decide between mobility or defense. Let's take a look at Montaigne here. He's got a pretty strong shield system. When he expands this all the way, he has to be standing to do so, but that makes him pretty much invulnerable from the front. You can't even shoot out his legs. His arms don't stick out the sides. You have to flank him if you want to get anything on him. You can put his shield away and then re-engage with the sidearm, but that will give you a moment of transition and uh, will allow you to at least have some offensive capabilities. Because of his shield system, he usually doesn't get a lot of kills if he's using it in that regard, and you're going to want to pair him up with another operator. He's probably what I consider to be the most defensive of the attackers. He is an attacker, but he can be played very defensively. And uh, y you've got to play to his strengths in that by pairing him up with another person, but you definitely have some risks when you do that. You're depending on another person to sort of be your arms and legs in a firefight. As you can see in this clip here, if you're not perfectly in sync with the person on your back, you're gonna get shot. It's key that you don't move, and it's key that the other operator shoots around you. In this case, he brought up the sights and engaged a little too quickly and clipped me in the shoulder, resulting in a team kill. What you want to do is control that pairing a little better so that you're always looking over, kind of peeking off to the side of a shoulder or something like that. When the shield user steps up, communicate it. When the fire support person needs them to move in a certain direction, they communicate that as well. Always keep that synergy going, you know, stay still, move left, move right, I'm moving up, you know, that kind of thing. And then you'll be able to have a tighter uh, synergy as you move through the maps this way. One thing that Montan suffers a problem from is when his shield is extended, he loses his view up. So when you're going upstairs, you're blinded. He can't tilt his view up very well when it's extended. Now, if it's in a regular shield mode, he's fine, but extended, he's all but blind going upstairs, and that can be a real liability. As you see here in this clip, I try to go up the stairs, and I can't see the next landing at all, even though I'm trying to look, so I have to put it away in order to be able to see what my surroundings are. Now, there's a third operator with the ability to use a shield, and that's Fuse. And that's really interesting because it's going to open up some different weapon options for you as well as abilities. I really enjoy his GSH-18 pistol. It has a very high capacity, and with the compensator on there, you're going to be able to control your follow-up shots very effectively. I find him to be a very good player. Now, his shield isn't as robust as some of the other ones. It has uh, maybe a little bit less coverage, possibly, uh, definitely than Montaigne's, but maybe even as compared to Blitz's. But the shield isn't necessarily what makes him a very effective operator with it. Your real strength with using him is going to be the fact that he can deploy his cluster charges, and that's going to put him strongly into offense. You can put the charges up, get a kill that way, or use it to flank and then come into a room from another direction with the shield, and then pop it from the other side, catching them kind of pinched in the middle. There's all kinds of ways that you can use the fact that he has the cluster charges. Pair that up with some stun grenades, and you can put together some pretty coordinated assaults using those. Besides Fuse, there are a couple of other shield operators if you take Recruits. These are going to be really interesting because you can have a fast movement speed. Uh, you have the choice between the M45, which is essentially the 1911, or the 5.7, and both of those are really good. If you take these, you can also equip with a frag grenade or a stun grenade, as well as breaching charges or smoke grenades, so you really have a lot of options here. 
Of course, you're limited. You'll only get one grenade. But having a shield operator with a grenade and a high-capacity magazine like maybe the FN57 here is a really good combination. You've also got that faster movement speed than the other shield operators have, so you can get into positions a lot quicker than you'd think. You also have the GIGN operator, which has the same loadout, and he'll just have a different pistol option to work with. Now let's talk about ways to stop a shield operator. So if you're facing somebody with a shield coming at you, you've got to be pretty careful. One really strong counter to that is for Smoke to use his gas grenades. They'll push him back, especially because most of the shield operators are very slow and clunky, and if they get caught in it, they can't get out fast enough. If nothing else, you'll create a barrier they won't want to pass. But if you do manage to score a hit with them, it can drop them pretty effectively. It does about 15 points per second of exposure. Now, if you don't have any gas grenades on hand, a nitro cell will do the job very nicely. They'll take a shield operator out no problem, and you can set up traps with these and make shield operators walk into them and just take them out as they approach or try to assault your position. A high-risk, high-reward method to dealing with them is to melee them. The first hit will stun them and cause their shield to open up wide, and they're unable to respond, allowing you to come in for a second strike and drop them down. That first shot will open up their shield, cause them to be exposed, and then you can go in for the kill. Another good tactic is if you can get a shield operator to step into some barbed wire. They are already pretty slow movers for the most part, and if you can slow them down even more, and they're going to be ripe for the picking as you come in and finish them off. If you're playing an operator like Montaigne, you have the ability to really run character down. I mean, there's not much they can do to stop you, and you can really pressure them all around the level and move them into areas where they might not otherwise have gone and cause them to become flanked. If you find yourself in that situation, rather than running away, try to run up and get the melee hit. You can't stun them like you can from the front, but if you can get around the side and flank, you can still get a melee that way since they're slower to respond. One special note about shield operators is that when they're under sustained barrage fire, they have a four and a half times accuracy penalty applied to them while they're buffeted under the incoming fire. So this is a good way to keep them suppressed. You usually can't get any kills unless you happen to score a hit on the hand or on the feet that are exposed. And if they walk in crouch, it's going to be a little tricky. So many times I see people get freaked out when a shield comes at them. And if they take the time and they know the tactics that are available to them, they might do a better job taking them out rather than panicking. Just remember, most of the shield operators are very slow movers. You're restricted to a pistol. To the operators that are applicable, make sure that you put on a laser sight for hip fire. Another thing to remember is to keep moving. If you're standing still with a shield operator, the animation stance puts the knee out to the side and creates yet another point that you can be shot from. Whereas if you're moving, the legs are always in motion and so that doesn't happen as much. Stay crouched because if you get shot in the feet, that's a fast way to take out a shield operator. Also, look out for anybody rushing in for the melee hit. If you get meleeed, you're stunned and unable to respond for two to three seconds. Next week, we've got a lot of exciting content with Black Ice coming out, so be sure to watch for coverage regarding the new operators, new map, and any new modes or skins that come out for that. We'll also be doing a giveaway next week for Rainbow Six Bronze Credit Packs. We have a lot of those to give out, and those will help you either get a new operator or put them towards a new skin if you like. So make sure to watch next week for details on how to enroll in that giveaway. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe to stay up to date on all the latest information for Siege. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time.